You know, styles of communication across cultures differ enormously, whether it's presenting, or, um, negotiations, making a sales pitch in meetings, or just talking. There's a vast difference. I still remember my worst nightmare. It took place in Helsinki, in Finland. I was going international. And this was my first opportunity to pitch for work. I went and made a presentation, and in my usual English manner, at the end, I said, any questions? But there was total silence. Nobody said a word. I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I left the room, and I didn't know whether I'd got the work or not, but fortunately, I had. Two months later, I was back in Helsinki making a presentation to a group of businessmen. And again, I got to the place where I said, OK, any questions? And again, there was total silence. My heart started to beat, my stomach churned. And I thought, now what's gone wrong? And then somebody giggled and said, Debbie, don't you know we're Finnish? I asked, what's Finnish got to do with asking questions? And then they explained that in Finland, they don't ask questions after a presentation. You're the expert, you choose what to put into the presentation, so who are they to decide or to ask questions on what you've decided to let out? Well, it wasn't what I expected, and boy, did I get a culture shock. The one thing that really startled me was when I was working with a chap called Seppo in Finland. And this was really the start of my cross-cultural learning. He asked me to go to Helsinki to help with some negotiations, some meetings with some British people. And I said, but Seppo, you speak English very well. And he said, ah, oh, Debbie, you see, I never understand when the British mean yes. What he had, in fact, highlighted to me, and I was completely unaware of it at the time, was that as Brits, we have coded speech. We're not very direct at being direct. Finns are notoriously shy, bashful. Um, if speaking to a class, as I uh, do in, from everything from preschool to postgraduate, I, um, Finns don't ask questions. So you have to adjust. You have to lay the questions out and encourage them to ask questions. So there was, that was basically a style difference in communication on university campuses and in settings like that. Um, there's a saying in Finland that a loud Finn is a drunken Finn. Finns are not loud. You, you, you scale down the volume a bit, and you listen more, and you pay attention to what they're having to say because they don't force themselves upon you. They are very 
um, laid back, or not laid back, but they're very, um, they will defer uh, beyond what Americans would. One of the major indicators of that is that in the city of Helsinki, there probably aren't a dozen stoplights. These people defer to each other. They know what the rules are. They play by the rules. When they get to an intersection, a four-way intersection, they will yield to the person who has the right-of-way. And there aren't accidents all over town, as you would expect in a place that doesn't have stop signs with other Nordic countries in general are high trust countries and that means that we have this generalized trusting attitude to other people. And one reason why that has been that like that is that we have been very homogeneous. Uh, there's been quite a high level of um, narrow um, economic differences. So we haven't been really diverse groups in Finland so far. But those countries where it's the other way around, we don't have to go further than Russia where you have to always build trust. You don't have the initial trust as we do in Finland. Or then there's also comparative studies to UK and Germany, for example, on supplier relationships. And also countries like Germany have been considered high in this impersonal and institutional trust. Whereas in UK, the interpersonal trust is relatively more important. I, I think that um, people in Russia, maybe also in China, we hear more later, if there is not so strong institutional trust, people have to learn to build interpersonal trust. And it might be actually that they have a relative advantage over there. Because if we have been living in Finland where we have the high institutional trust, uh, it's kind of a, it might make us even a little bit lazy. Now when we are not only Finns among each other, and we have to learn how to build trust with others who come from very different cultures and contexts.